So we are going to start looking at uh, some of the AI issues, concerns, and ethical consideration, uh, because this is one of the one of the themes which was coming in um, very strong uh, in uh, yesterday's uh, session. Ethical consideration, and even in your reflections, you guys were um, really making some interesting points uh, there in terms of ethics and. Uh, from the yesterday's, uh, if you reflect on the uh, major themes which you guys brought in yesterday's conversation or discussion, you, it's, it makes sense that uh, to move forward in uh, artificial intelligence, ethics is one thing which is very important, but then when you spend time in looking at, at ethics and those type of things, and if a country is spending too much time on it, then the other countries who are maybe moving fast in ethical considerations they are maybe uh, over a period of time they are going to go a little bit ahead maybe uh, but before i move just to confirm from my side it, it is perfectly fine but my voice is clear to you guys no problem now just confirm anyone it's clear <laughs> now beautiful thanks thanks very much carol okay so and uh, the link of the website is uh, is uh, on the OMA, so you can you can uh, follow the link there. So click there. Um, let me show you again. Um, this is what will show up. AI. You click lectures. Once you click lectures, it is AI for everyone. First one. You click this, and from there you are coming to module three artificial intelligence issues concerns and so you are just clicking here and this is where you will be but if you are lost or something you are not on that website nothing to worry about anyways just follow the follow try to follow what i'm trying to say and then participate in the discussion and and so on and should be fine yeah so ethics uh, future of jobs maybe you guys were talking about biases and how to remove them. Uh, some interesting, you know, comments uh, people were making. And for example, you know, you would remember some of the things which uh, Sidra was telling us that, you know, yes, bias is there, but there are some mechanisms which companies or people or scientists use and follow and try to minimize those. And then we were saying that, yes, that is correct, but then still there can be some issues and stuff so there the exchange some exchange was was there at the end of the session and even throughout uh, the conversation so you click this uh, this one is ethics of artificial intelligence and robotics this is a very nice uh, piece i have found for you guys what are the main debates privacy and surveillance yeah privacy issues yeah you guys who are uh, talking about, for example, Fatma was talking about data yesterday. Yeah. So in that privacy, yeah, surveillance, yeah, manipulation of behavior. You did not use the word manipulation of behavior, but if you reflect, uh, those things were there. Like you know, for example, the comments Lime was making, yeah, about regulation and the government is a little bit slow. So it's kind of you can link it with manipulation of of behaviors biases in decision making yeah human robot interaction yeah so how to make it maybe more uh, more user friendly for example you can some friends are talking about maybe uh, design of the of the robotics um, some of you spoke about it in your reflection also yeah automation and employment yeah some very interesting uh, reflections some of our friends sent me about about that and one friend was talking about you know horses like uh, way back in the day when you, you would know that ford is the company which uh, started the assembly line in the automation and uh, honorable ford may ford uh, ford made a lot of contribution in uh, in the advancement of vehicles at that time by utilizing different type of uh, best practices or motivating employees and those type of things. But before that, people were using horses and stuff like that for 
<laughs> for <laughs> for conveyance and travel and all of those things but then so she gave a little bit little piece one of the friends in in our reflection that you know at that time two horses are talking and they are saying oh uh, cars are coming what is our future and one said well we will have some future and the other said we don't know what is going to happen something around those lines and same type of conversation is maybe happening um you know um, various people are talking about that now what will be the future of human beings what what type of skills we should acquire to find employability um some friends made very interesting comments in the in the in the reflection about that and um maybe they can share some of the things today also uh, around those topics autonomous systems artificial uh, moral agents these type of things so of course these are things which you will over a period of time you are going to see and reflect and and read around around those things but these are the these are some of the major themes which you should be at least thinking about and uh, try to come up with your own themes also uh, along these main debates like what do you think is the, is should be the part of a uh, main debate in terms of ethical consideration as ai moves forward what are the things we should uh, we should uh, be mindful of in your own uh, country looking at your own country where or wherever you are going to work we are wherever you are going to settle um understanding the infrastructures and uh, limitations and because every country no matter how advanced it it, it, it is uh, every place have its limitation some in one form or another so looking at in your own environment and uh, reflecting on it for example you know if you ask me uh, in the in context of jamaica for example if you are interested in infra infrastructure is something where uh, where we need to maybe move forward infrastructure yes um, that is that is that is very important uh, just a while ago you saw that uh, my internet connection was a little bit unstable for a for a moment and it can happen in any country like you know depending on where you are and what you are using and what is the load and so many things are linked with it but uh, those things need to improve infrastructure need to improve but that would need uh, a lot of uh, investment yeah so some countries don't have that type of money even if because they have budget and they have so many other issues they have to link look at poverty basic education other type of things they have to look at so all the money goes in in that and then once it it comes to these type of things they don't have any money left so if they are going to borrow the money from other entities then of course whoever is going to give that countries some amount of money they are going to come with their own agenda and uh, they would have their own uh, you know uh, what they want to seek from that relationship so so it can it can again bring in some 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 trouble uh, in different in different ways so uh, think around think around these things and um, many links are are there uh, let's look at some of them and these these websites uh, are selected over a period of time after very careful consideration so you should go on to do those type of things for example unesco yeah uh, united nation entity elaboration of a recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence yeah so for example you would remember that in yesterday's session some friends were posing some questions yeah and uh, those type of questions uh, and some of the friends mentioned in the in their reflection also that uh, the answers are not easy uh, they uh, they require a lot of collaboration sometimes like different people have different point of view and you saw that in yesterday's uh, yesterday's conversation that different people were uh, putting emphasis on different pointers it was not that at the end of the session session we had uh, we had agreed that okay this is 
this is the way forward nothing like that yeah so these type of readings you would i would say you should start uh, start looking looking at yeah so there are various recommendations let's look at some of the things maybe we need international and national policies and regulatory frameworks yeah international collaborations yeah national policies now, if you want to think about national policies, I gave you a little task yesterday that please look into the national policy of your country. Like if you are coming from Finland, look at the type artificial intelligence policy, Finland. You are coming from Turkey, put that in artificial intelligence, government policy, Turkey. What comes up? Find the relevant website, go there. They must have posted something there. What are, what are, they, what are they trying to do in the next 10 years? what is the emphasis now reading that that type of information is going to give you some idea that where the country is trying to go that is going to give you some idea that where are the new jobs going to come in because in artificial intelligence in different countries different types of jobs are going to come it is not that in every country same type of jobs are going to come again for various reasons I just spoke about uh, infrastructure, for example. So depending on where the country is in terms of infrastructure, they are going to decide where they want to start. And every country is, you know, in, in, a, in a different, uh, different resources are there, different type of human capital is there. Yeah. So looking at those type of national policies, you would, like, let's say you want to immigrate to some country, you want to, let's say you want to go to Canada and you want to make a career in you know whatever field does not necessarily has to be ai whatever field it is so you if you look at their national policies and try to understand where the country wants to go just by looking at those those type of documentation you can have because you are smart people you are going to have an idea what skill should i have which is going to help me go in that country yeah in next five year ten year they make plans there yeah so but let's come back to what we are talking about so the regulatory framework yeah you guys spoke about that regulations you guys put a lot of emphasis if you can recall yesterday that regulations how important that is and in your reflection also i'm very happy that you guys were uh, did very nice work to ensure that these emerging technologies benefit humanity as a whole it's not a one country you have to think about here yeah, whole and that's why i was saying that you need to look for the countries which are maybe not rep represent rep representing here you need to think from their point of view also we need a human centered ai ai must be for the greater interest of the people not the other way around yeah but then this is this looks good on a piece of paper but when countries go on their journey you would see that again they have their own interests they have their own agendas um, what is in interest for germany maybe it is not in interest of india maybe we don't know that yeah so everyone is making decisions based on their own interest also. But having said that, as much as possible, if it is human centered, uh, it would be it would be it would be nice. Yeah. There are some clips you can watch that in your own time. Five things you need to know uh, about 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 AI. Maybe we can discuss a couple of couple of them. Uh, AI driven growth is likely to, uh, to, uh, to be highly unequal. This is very interesting point and gender bias is going to come into this. A lot of girls are here in the session and yesterday mostly girls were speaking and contributing to the, to the discussion. Only 22% of all AI professionals are women. Now, why is that? What is, what is going on in that? This is just by uh, you can make a career in this. Uh, that you know why how to improve that what are the things different stakeholders need to do while national policies you can look at that 
regulatory framework how it can improve you can look at that yeah because this is going to stay for some time after after years you find some type of equality if it is 22 percent right now how many years you think it is going to take to these two 50 percent that is like twice 22 plus 22 44 yeah so it is going to take some time what are the reasons explore explore those reasons uh, and this is something which people will always be uh, talking about so just by looking at this area you have a you have a career there yeah ai is expected to generate nearly us 4 trillion in added value uh by 2022 we're going to look at different countries when we are discussing europe and then maybe look look into 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 that climate change environmental issues for example some friends who are talking in yesterday's discussion like they did not maybe elaborate but agri agriculture uh, how agriculture is being transformed in 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 different countries and what are the link with the with the ethics yeah that is again very interesting uh, area to maybe maybe reflect reflect on these things you would have to you know look look in your own time biased ai autonomous cars you guys based on what you what the reflections and yesterday's discussion i'm comfortable that this is no big deal for you guys so and uh, one friend is uh, from law also in our in our session so maybe she can look at look at this this also because in law uh, the future of law is also quite exciting uh, their ethics and the pursuit of artificial intelligence failure to propose solutions about how the ethical dilemmas raised by ai will be addressed uh, could pose an existential threat to the human race ethical dilemmas and what are those ethical dilemmas you guys have uh, almost every second person i think they spoke about some type of ethical dilemma uh in their in their reflections uh, they were giving various examples the famous one is the car one uh, um, self-driving car uh, if if a if a self-driving car uh is on the road and uh, it uh, it on one on one side there are there is a little child just one child alone uh it's a young child and on the other other side there is a old old man or a woman for that sake um, um let's say a man because there is already a lot of gender bias so there is an old man on the other other side and there is a little little child on the other side so and wh where to where to crash if the speed is too high there is two alternatives where to crash so for for human mind it think things differently but what type of data or algorithms you would have to create in the in the robotics or artificial intelligence or these these type of uh, technologies which is going to help them make that see and it's quite troubling because before you are going to make technology you can make technology is there are scientists who know their thing and they are going to make their technology but what command you are going to give that is the ethical first you need to decide on a piece of paper it's not about technology it's about deciding first debating just conversating talking that okay this is the dilemma where to crash are we going to kill the child a young young small child or we are going to kill the kill the old man first you need to decide that before you're going to put in the algorithm so how to decide that if you, we can try this you can debate and after even three hours i am 100 percent sure that is, is there will be a divide not every, all of people are not going to agree on on one thing and we are just like 30 40 yeah, 40 people in the room just 40 so uh, it's that is why these type of ethical issues are always going to be there and then what is what is ethics anyways what is ethical for you is maybe is not ethical for me maybe what you consider 
a wrong practice is not a wrong practice for me based on the way I'm raised, based on my uh, environment, based on whatever, you know. Uh, we were giving some examples yesterday that, uh, you know, uh, uh, you see a girl in hijab, you might say that she is conservative. Maybe she is not conservative. She is very modern. You don't, you can't say by the way she is dressed. On the other hand, a girl, a girl is wearing a mini skirt and you think that she is available, but she is maybe not available. Yeah, she is not that type of girl. It is just, she just dressed like that. Yeah. So this is the, and you have seen this in the environment. It's very, these are very, very, it's not about hard or easy question. Even the, I would say that the right word is not hard question. It is just, you know, it's not hard. It is just people think dif differently. It is just like uh, people, people, it is just like, if you like, if, if, if you ask me what color I like, and I say, I like uh, white color. And you say, no, no, that is wrong answer. You should like blue. That's not going to happen. I like white, that is what, what I like. I like white color. So because you don't like white color, you are going to say, and no, white color is not right. You like blue color. Same thing in the conversation of AI. I would advise or suggest very humbly that when you are in the conversation of AI, when someone says something which you don't agree, listen to the point. Just listen to the point. Why you why don't agree or don't disagree? Listen to the point, take it. This is how that person thinks. It's not about like you start pressing your point on the other person. It's why you want to press your point. Yeah? Same way I was saying yesterday, a couple of times I said, I can say it again. And these things, whatever I am saying, these are not final words at all in any way. Whatever is on the website, whatever is going to happen in this course or the other courses which you might take with me, nothing is nothing is binding. These are just pointers to reflect on. And then you decide what is going to happen. Same way you should, I think that you should, you should have an open, that openness in mind is I feel very important, especially when you are, uh, when you will be, when you are talking about diversity and you are talking about different viewpoints, when we just spoke about national policies and international co collaborations, just a while ago, I showed you an article. Need to really first, before moving into technology domain, first need to really take time to understand that people are different. They think differently. It is not about right and wrong. But then to achieve this mindset, it is very hard because we are wired with our, with our way of doing things. You would think, depending on if you are from, from Germany, you are going to think that the way Germans do the things, that is the right way to do the things. Most of the time, most of the time, not everyone. My roots are from Pakistan, so I am going to think that Pakistan is whatever Pakistan is doing is 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 the is the is the right 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 way of dealing dealing the dealing the dealing with the things. On the other hand, Gurvinder is maybe his roots are maybe from India, so he's going to say Indians are the the, the right way of doing things is Indian way, and Pakistanis don't make sense. So once that thing comes in. And so far, you can you can now think about these things. Once you have that type of that type of mentality, maybe in other things, maybe it can work. I don't know. But we are talking about these technology aspect, uh, especially artificial intelligence and trying to focus on ethical and biases. A little openness is 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 uh, is especially in the beginning. It is it is going to help. But after that, of course, once you have listened to other people, don't just say right away that you are wrong. Yeah, don't say right away. Sleep over it. Reflect on it. Read around that. Read 10, 12, 20 books on that. Over a period of time, increase your knowledge. And after that, if you think that your way of doing things is the right way, you stick with that. No problem. 
I'm not saying that you go with the other part, you know. I'm just saying that make the decision after listening to other viewpoints without prejudice, stereotyping. Then over a period of time, try to develop your thinking. But that generally does not happen. Generally, we try to defend our ideas. And especially, like, for example, I am saying what I am saying. Let's say Ellen, Ellen, Eleonora comes in and she says, well, Tashwin, you don't make sense. It's whatever you are saying is nonsense. Let's say she's not going to say that, but I'm just saying, if you say, what, what, how I'm going to react? I'm going to become defensive. I'm going to say, no, this and that. That, that you, you need to cut off a little bit, a little bit, as much as, as possible. So with that context, try to uh, think about these things. I have posted the videos for you to watch in your own time. I have added my two cents on ethics and biases and given you some pointers uh, there to reflect on based on now your own wherever you are in the in your understanding because some friends have more knowledge about biases, some friends have little knowledge. Irrespective of that, this is introductory course, so nothing to really worry about. Nothing is heavy on the website. There is a lot of information on the website which can sometimes overwhelm people that there is a lot of things there. But you are not assessed on if you are going to look at all of those things or not. You are just following the assessment posted on OMA. And that is that is simple thing to, to look at. But these type of videos, like they're short videos, five minute video, issues and concerns about AI. So you play this clip, listen to it. Some point of view or views are there. We are going to have some discussion in our session also. Our friends are going to say a couple of things. You agree, that is fine. You don't agree, no problem. There's no need to, you know, fight or anything like that. Listen to other people's point of view. Enjoy it. Enjoy the diversity. Sleep over it. Think about it. And after that, if you think your point of view is fine, you, you stick with that. Nothing is wrong with sticking with with your with your points there so there are a couple of videos i could also play them and you know we could debate on those pointers also that is one strategy which could be used but you know i think we are we are meeting live so the point is that we try to interact as much with each other as possible and these things are there you can watch them in your in your own time so uh, make some points, make some things what is coming to your mind. Uh, uh, what we are trying to uh, discuss a little bit is uh, um, um, AI issues, concerns, ethical considerations based on your own uh, exposure. You talk about anything a little bit, make a couple of comments. We will see how it goes and then we will try to do uh, more on this. Yes, so please go ahead. Yes. I just wanted to ask if we have access to the website after the uh, week is finished so we can still watch some videos because um, when you have limited time but you want to see everything, um, maybe it would make sense if we have access after the week as well. Oh yes, that is not a problem, Iklan. You have lifetime access to the website. There is, that is nothing to do with the, with the, with the thing. Yes, so yes guys, what what are what do you think is is what is your opinion on anything ethics how ethic ethical issues can be sorted out in any domain what are the challenges in your country based on your exposure what you have seen anything you would want to uh, say you are more than welcome to come in and make some make some points on that uh, as you are maybe thinking about that this is interesting artificial intelligence has a gender bias problem just ask siri so maybe you know this is siri is based on some type of intelligence so you pose this type of question to siri open up your phone if you have uh, access to siri and make some ask some question on that and see how siri responds to that type of that type of inquiry and 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 that type of question you're not going to find a very maybe reasonable answer. Why? Again, the reason is that people don't agree on these type of these type of issues many times. So then it becomes difficult to uh, find the 
find the answer for that these type of reports unesco and so on you need to over a period of time you would have to uh, look into that mckinsey and company i hope you are familiar with the with the company they publish a very interesting uh, reports and podcast and uh, videos and so on on different issues and a conversation on artificial intelligence and gender bias again gender bias is linked with uh, some type of uh, ethical and uh, moral values and and again gender bias in some countries it is more in other countries it is it is less that again you would based on your taste and interest you would want to think about that so this is i think uh, you would you you would you would you would enjoy not just girls boys should also read this type of this type of uh, this type of article so i'm just introducing you to these type of uh, web website um, again these are very interesting uh, pieces which you should try to watch a couple of them at least uh, because you will be uh, doing your reflection so it's important that maybe you can watch one or two or have some even if as i'm uh, as i'm speaking you can go on the website and open the articles and browse through them i think that is a that is a good practice um, to to do with you good want. grammar and spelling but, uh, at least uh, one clip on this uh, should we should we should watch and uh, i'm just going to select this one uh, this is a clip here it is like 10 minutes long so uh, we are going to watch it together but i am also posting it in the chat so in case the voice quality is not coming clearly for the video or something i posted it in the chat so you can uh, you can just watch it uh, through that link also open it in your own browser and that is the that is something which i will do continuously if i show you any other clip i will also post it in the chat so if uh, you want to watch it in your own browser you can play it because of course the uh, quality and voice would be would be better but uh, we are going to uh, play this clip for like it's like 10 minutes and watch it and then come back and then you are going to maybe give your pointers opinion what you saw and we will try to have some type of conversation and see how it uh, it goes yes elena please go ahead you want something uh, i think you posted the link into some private chat not the, the chat everyone sees thanks thanks very much thanks very much for that now okay now i am sure that everyone is 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 seeing it yeah beautiful all right thanks for pointing that out appreciate it facial recognition already an integral part of american society and law enforcement i would say most of us by now most American adults are in a face recognition database. And it's not just the police. Stores and schools now use the technology as well. So the problems with face recognition is there are no rules. Retailers are using facial tech to identify their customers' age, sex, and moods. And one company in Israel even says it can identify terrorists based on their facial features alone. What type of scientific rigor has been applied to determining whether this is real or not. We've come to Seattle to explore the gray areas of facial recognition technology, visiting an elementary school that's deploying the technology. It seems like it's a very open school. Yeah. And you feel pretty safe here? Yeah. They've always had a gate there, but then they recently added a door to get in where you have to use your face to get in. And how does that change things? I mean, you just see less people in the courtyard, like, hanging around. This private elementary school in Seattle, with over 300 students, is one of the first in the U.S. to install a facial recognition system. How about you are a visitor to the school okay. and you want to gain access? All right, let's give it a try. Okay. 
The school installed the system to make access for parents easier and relieve the front desk workers. They also wanted to add an additional layer of safety procedures since the school doesn't have a dedicated security staff. Nope, no can't luck. get in. Especially after the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, which killed 26 people, 20 of them students aged six and seven. Schools nationwide are looking for ways to prevent unauthorized people from entering their grounds. So you want to make sure that everyone is here is known, all the adults are known. That's right. Okay, well, let's see what happens when I show up. Gate opens and we We're go in. in. The system automatically lets in teachers, administrators, and parents who have signed up to use it. How do the parents feel about it? Do any of them say, I don't want to do it? Well, we make sure that they know it's an opt-in program, and I've got about 300 adults signed up on this, so they're very supportive of it. The school says Real Network's facial recognition system has made its campus more secure, and they're not alone. According to Real Networks, over a dozen schools nationwide are currently installing the software, which the company provides free of charge to schools in the U.S. and Canada. This is an interface that you might find at a school. This can be associated with other IDs, so you can, you know, tie it into attendance systems, record systems, things like that. Is the interest these schools have in this related to the active shooter scenario? I think that's some of the issue, and certainly at the high school level, that's where we see a lot of issue. Um, most of the use cases, though, come from the younger kids, that they're concerned about people coming and going from the school. Real Network says it vigorously tested the facial recognition system at the elementary school and even installed a motion detection feature. But can you trick the system by, say, having a photo of the headmaster? Let's see. Well, it opens. Real Networks told us that on the day we visited the school, they had temporarily disabled the smile to unlock feature to install loudspeakers. The system is now back up and running. Additionally, they said the front desk person provides a layer of security. What if a system fails and lets somebody in who shouldn't have been allowed in? Are there other security measures in place? Claire Garvey is a facial recognition researcher at Georgetown Law School's Center on Privacy and Technology. What are the most common applications for facial recognition technology these days? One of the most common applications is its use in law enforcement to conduct investigations. Facial recognition is very common in our day-to-day -day lives as well. Think of the iPhone 10 and its face unlock feature. Retail outlets are increasingly using face recognition. There are databases of suspected shoplifters and also high value customers. And employers use face recognition as a security measure, and DHS is using face recognition as part of their biometric exit program. The Department of Homeland Security installed this pilot system so the authorities can track who's leaving the country. Compel Verdi is Homeland Security's assistant director for Orlando, Florida's airport. She introduces me to a new way to board the plane. Should I give this a try? Sure. You would put your feet on the two yellow prints, please. Okay. Look at the camera. And lucky us, it's not going to board you because you're not in the gallery. The passport and visa photos of the passengers waiting to board this British Airways flight are already pulled into the photo gallery of the facial recognition system. Passengers we met on the other side seemed pleasantly surprised. Do you like it? Yeah, it's good. It's good? It's good. It's nice we're getting this thing out. It's not... You don't need that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Researchers at Georgetown University have criticized the usage of the technology. From a privacy perspective, do you have concerns about what DHS is doing with facial recognition technology? My concern is a few fold. One is that 
there has been a consistent lack of transparency around how the data is being stored and what it might be used for in the future. One in particular is to what degree the private companies that they're partnering with have access to that data as well. Do they then have access to those photos and can they use those photos for marketing purposes? The Department of Homeland Security said the airlines don't have access to the photos of the passengers and that the pictures of all travelers are stored for less than two weeks. So what do you see as the future? The future is going 100% at every airport and on entry and exit. When it's doing this facial recognition mm -hmm. stuff, can it tell if I look really guilty? I don't think a picture can tell you if you look guilty. Can you tell me what a guilty person looks like? But what if a picture could, could tell if someone looks guilty? We've come to Israel to meet with a company that says it's so-called facial feature analysis technology can do just that. So let's go to the system and let's check it. Let's look about the 9-11 hijackers. Okay. And see what the system says about these guys. Gilboa says that his system isn't checking the photos against a database of known terrorists to find a match. Instead, he claims that his engineers have trained an algorithm to identify facial features and expressions that terrorists allegedly have in common. We run the classifier. Okay, and we find that most of them are really terrorists. So what we do, we can find these people without any prior information. I, I don't know what to make of that. The idea that you can analyze someone's face and predict whether or not they have terroristic potential. Yes. What type of scientific rigor has been applied to determining whether this is real or not? I need to emphasize that there is no scientific uh, evidence for the terrorist classifier. We made blind testing with the clients. And in blind tests, we reach more than 80% accuracy. We've not been able to independently verify that Faceception's algorithm accurately identifies terrorists by their facial expressions. Faceception is a case study of where face characterization gets incredibly dangerous. That, quite simply to me, is at very, very best junk science, at very worst racism by algorithm. We brought our own collection of photos of convicted terrorists for a test bad quality. It's need to be like mag shots. Women you can skip, we didn't develop on women. Gilboa ran all the photos he selected from our batch simultaneously. The system identified one terrorist, a 9-11 hijacker, correctly. Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, was identified as not a terrorist. Faceception claims that its software identifies potential terrorists based on their facial expressions and not based on their race. But the company admits that even in blind tests, people are sometimes flagged in error. I sincerely hope that there is not a market for what Faceception is selling. Unfortunately, they do say they have a contract with a major Homeland Security agency somewhere in the world. Gilboa claims that two government agencies outside the US are currently using his software but he repeatedly declined to name these alleged clients. We've not been able to independently confirm with any government agency that they're using Faceception. We're entering a new world where uncertain technology might try to read our faces as if reading our minds. Yes, they have made very interesting pointers, a lot of considerations for ethics and so on. But uh, before I say anything, any any thoughts, any comments based on you watch this very interesting uh, uh, clip there? What? How are you looking at it? They are talking about facial recognition usage in schools, using in airports, trying to identify who is terrorist, who is not. And at the end of the clip, you saw that they were saying that there are companies which are using this type of software. So it is not something I'm not trying to show you anything yesterday or today or during the uh, during our engagement that these are the things which are, you know, going to only happen in future and not right now. 
in the future they are just going to become better and better and more improved right now companies are using it you can link the discussion with the pointers made yesterday also like for example human resource if you are going to send in your cv um, should you like for example one friend mentioned in their reflection that if a company is going to use these type of technology which were mentioned yesterday uh, should the company tell the candidate that yes your cv is going to be you know uh, sorted by some technology or something like that or generally speaking what i have seen is in most of the countries they don't really really tell even you know even in hr it's not that always you get a notification that your your cv is uh, is under review or something maybe you will get an automated response which is just <laughs> generated but generally very few companies are there who are really you know uh, telling the sometimes they tell even tell that you know only shortlisted candidates will be contacted and if you are not contacted just forget about it something like that but you know look, look and especially this title you know this title is very interesting at least to me and yesterday if you can link with yesterday's uh, conversation also because uh, we showed so many examples yesterday like you know how to can can you uh, is it like one friend reflected uh, that uh, yes maybe you can identify who is more risky to uh, rent your room to because the technology looking at the features it can it is going to suggest that this is high risk renter is not going to pay the dues on time but, but the but one participant was reflecting that where it is going to be used how it will be used uh, is it uh, is it right to use it <laughs> or or not and you saw it in this clip also which you which you just which you just saw is that uh, terrorists uh, the technology was not 100% in uh, in identifying that who is terrorist and who is not a terrorist and it made some uh, some uh, some mistakes also um, so but but the point is that yes but it's going to improve over a period of time as you guys were mentioning yesterday that it learns AI learns over a period of time, more and more data goes in, uh, the better the decision making is, is going to be. But, but anyways, very interested in listening to what you guys have to say. So as many people as possible, please uh, participate in the, in the question. So basic question is again, let me repeat it, that issues, concerns, ethical considerations, anything around the around the role of AI, around the role of technologies, whatever is coming to your your mind, please, um, please uh, participate and don't think that you're if you're you are maybe early career in AI and don't know much, don't underestimate yourself. I think that you guys know a lot. Yes, please go ahead. I'm just uh... Uh, yeah, can you hear me? I'm just thinking that uh, suppose if uh... Um, the it would be like system will be completely rely on this um, facial recognition technology in sensitive matter and suppose if there are identical twins and if one person is committing crime then uh, how <laughs> what is the possibility of another person you know being punished or being convicted for so that's uh, or uh, like in some banking system also you know like or somebody just kidnap somebody and you know just put something in front and uh, that person in front and unlock the system then that would be a big problem so <laughs> oh yes very interesting very interesting oh. point and and in the clip you can you can see that uh, they use the picture of the headmaster the principal and they brought that picture in in front of the in front of the technology and how it reacted so 
this is very interesting point which our friend is making uh, um, even in one reflection that was very very funny and very interesting that you know the uh, kidnapping you uh, how the future of kidnapping would be how people would kidnap others like they would just hack their car and use the system and take them <laughs> wherever wherever they if they can hack the hack the system of the car self driving car for example they can take the car wherever wherever they where they want and uh, this this identical twin is also you know very very interesting and uh, <laughs> so uh, yes very good yeah next one uh, so i had a thought about uh, the last part of the video where it said we're, we're going to show the technology identifying terrorists, which is kind of flawed in my opinion, because mm -hmm. most likely if they fed uh, the most known terrorist into the uh, learning process. So it try, tries to identify, and like it said, it didn't identify the Unabomber or anything. But that kind of reminded me of, uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie Minority Report, where mm -hmm. they, they uh, start apprehending people uh, before they even commit crimes. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence system says that the, these people are going to commit crimes in the future, which is kind of dystopian. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's let's not let's hope it doesn't get there. <laughs> yeah, very, very nice point, Jess. And uh, um, those of us who maybe have not have not seen um, seen Minority Report, maybe it's, it's interesting if you have time, you should check it up or even watch little clips on YouTube or something like that. Uh, it's very, it's very interesting. And yes, true, true problems. Yes. Next one, please. Yeah, to oh, add to the point. Sorry. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say like to add to his point, like finding this potential terrorist, but I think like to have the higher accuracy, there should be like, like thousands of, or maybe even millions of images to have a better accuracy yes. and if they find the number of like these terrorists there are not many images like they can get images from the same person but to get the higher accuracy there should be like thousands of images so how this can be accurate and there can be like innocent people who can be a target so they said <laughs> yeah yes very interesting point also you know just to bring a little bit of a twist to your to your uh, the things you guys are saying just for reflection purposes just like we are talking about AI, imagine that, you know, terrorists are also, you know, sometimes they are very much educated and they are qualified. They just, they are, they are maybe brainwashed in the university or something. So they are also aware of artificial intelligence. And if they start using AI, what is going to happen there? Uh, any technology, like for example, drones, drones is a technology people use, use. but if it, it, it is, it is used by terrorists, how they can use it? They can watch our movements through drone cameras and just observe us, whatever we are doing over a period of time from distance and make their strategy. Same way with uh, with these pointers, which our friends are, are making. They, uh, so in the future of even, uh, yes, we need to know about these type of technologies uh, to uh, be useful member of the society in the future. But if terrorists are or thieves want to grow in their business, they would also have to be good in these type of uh, technologies. The cars of the future are going to, you won't be able to get into, into the car if you are not technology savvy. So <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is something which everyone would have to uh, learn on a, on a, lighter, uh, a lighter note. I said that, of course, we don't uh, appreciate crime and these type of things, but it's, this is what it is. Yes, next, please. Even with our images take being being taken everywhere, I think in some years there will be like one person will be sharing like thousands of his images. And maybe in a few years, everyone can be detected anywhere using some cameras from the satellite or beautiful. something. Yeah. What a beautiful point. What a beautiful point our friend has made. Very good. Lovely point. Yeah. And this is this is where China is going. Uh, this this using this this thing which our friend is making. This is what is making China 
more advanced in AI because they are already collecting images of their people. They already have the data. They already have all that this type of information which our friend is, is saying. He's saying for a few years for rest of the world because why? Why they are not able to collect that facial images and all of that? Because of people, people say we have our rights. We don't want to share our data, this and that, all those type of issues, regulation, politics, they need, we need to come in the election. They can't, you know, upset their voters. So many things are there, yes. But for China, those issues are not there. So they are just collecting, collecting. They have already collected and they, that has helped them to better manage their, 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 their people. Of course, uh, we can argue now that that is it right or is it not right because we are trying to discuss a little bit of eth ethics and bias and those type of things but the point our friend is making is that once you have that type of facial recognition and everything now you can now everything will change policing will change the way you interact with banks is going to change everything is going to change you can you can now use that technology to improve services for for your for your for your people so for example one friend was in the reflection they were saying that they are in the service industry and uh, they are quite concerned like because bots and all of these things are uh, going to improve the service uh, quality of service management uh, it, it already has and it will more in the future so how i should prepare for uh, that type of future in terms of improving uh, customer service and those type of things yeah, so these are very interesting point our friend is friend is friend, friend has made thanks for that yes next please uh yes hello um i personally think like uh, face recognition uh, fa face recognition is a good thing for uh, safety for schools for example, uh, in America, you have like many uh, random people with guns, so you don't want like random yes. people coming to school. And so I think it's a good thing. But um, the terrorist thing, the uh, recognized terrorists, I don't think that's like really gonna work because now you also have like human argumentation and can just change things in your face, and yeah, terrorists won't uh, get recognized. So I don't think that's really gonna work. I think that's gonna bring more problems. But uh, for schools, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, it's now the use our friend is saying that uh, this technology is fine, but where you are going to use it inside. This is very good example, which he has given. It was not necessarily in the video or we did not discuss it. So uh, having awareness of other countries is, is important in understanding what's what situations they are facing. So this is a big challenge in, in US because of the right to buy a gun. Uh, or weapon in different states now different states read on this very good point uh, saying in different states they have different laws and in different states they have different regulations who can buy what type of weapon even in some states states anyone literally can go to the shop and buy the buy the weapon and as many weapons as they as they want still even now you can do some research on that so that now it uh, sometimes it, it just type in Google search in school firing, gun firing, students, how many people killed. Uh, they just students go with the gun and just fire and many people are not there anymore. Uh, so uh, this this point which our friend is making is, is very, very interesting. So it has some utility there also, but then the challenges are also there. Uh, so in between finding some type of balance is uh, what we are going to try in our discussion that we try to have at least maybe not the answers answers are i don't think answers are important right now the, uh, the what is important is discussion raising questions and from that and afterwards you go on the website read different articles and you know over a period of time maybe try to find some 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 reasonable answer in your in your community and this is also <laughs> this what Singh is saying is the answer is not going to be same for every country every 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 nation every country would have their own uh, way of uh, dealing with ethical issues that's why I said a while ago uh, 
that read the national policies of, of towards AI of your country or wherever you want to settle. I think that is that is that would be very important. Very good, guys. Very good. Yes. Yeah, I also was thinking that this is a very good, especially because in my country, Colombia, there are a lot of like people stealing or pay people um, getting like stolen their stuff. So if we would have this system, uh, that would be really, really good for the country. But then the next question will be, could the country really like afford this type of technology? Because yeah, there are not many. There's not, I, I suppose this should be really, really expensive to implement in in a country in a third world country like Colombia. But of course, thinking how many like stealings and so many type of really horrible things are happening over there, this would be like really nice solution. That's what I thought. And another thing, um, uh, another point that I, I had, it was that. This, this could be so nice if this could be uh, connected to IoT or some something related to the internet. I mean, I, I really, really don't know. But like, for example, if you are looking at the face of a person and then you think the, the system recognizes, okay, this person is a terrorist, but then you could have this information backed up by or supported with data or with like the person's historial of what he has done in his life what he has been doing probably like, okay, this person has rented this apartment and he, he paid the last time. So he's going to pay, like he's been pay, uh, paying all these years to all of these people. So the system cannot really like do this, let's say mistake. I was thinking if it has this backup, but if it has like this bad historial, like this person is a tourist and then you see the, the record of stuff, like stuff this person has been doing. Okay, this person has been like, I don't know, depressed at his home, then he bought a gun, then he's doing this thing, then he didn't, he disappeared for a while. Then kind of you, okay, you see, okay, there is something we are going on with this person. So kind of the, the, the information could could fix, like could um, be valid, with validated with this type of data. And I thought over, over a couple of years, of course, all of our information will be public. But um, then, then it will be way much safer. I mean, if we if we if we are not ashamed of what we're doing, then we should be okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Awesome. Amazing, very good, very good, Carolina. And I'm sure all people in the room will agree that you made wonderful contribution to the discussion we are trying to have. And for that, we would like love to thank you. I don't know why you said you said something like I don't know. You seem like expert in the in the field. Our friend was talking about <laughs> Colombia, and you know, I would give the same sentiments for Jamaica, for example. So these developing countries, they have these type of challenges. Their crime rate is high. If we can use some type of facial recognition, and please uh, think about this. It's not just the face which is going to be used for facial recognition. It is also the objects. So, for example, if the car is stolen, the car picture is also oh. taken, the face of the car, you can call it facial recognition for the car or your laptop is uh, stolen. The picture of the laptop, it is part is facial. It's, it's not it's face of the laptop face of the cycle. If your cycle is stolen, I was I'm going to show you a couple of things when we are talking about China, what China is doing. It's also doing facial, the facial recognition and also it is taking object recognition. So cycle object. Okay. So if the cycle is stolen and that object is, they have it and they have cameras, infrastructure. Carolina spoke about infrastructure. So in countries like Colombia, Jamaica, infrastructure is going to be the problem. So how we are going to fund that? That's, it will take, so that is why uh, when people say that it will take forever to gain the benefits of AI, uh, it's because of this, because of the divide in different countries and what is going to maybe happen no one really knows we are just trying to discuss over a period of time that divide that divide between the countries like there is already divide between jamaica and finland Jama uh, uh, colombia and germany it's divided germany finland these are uh, more advanced countries yes we know that yeah but as if they keep on continuing with these type of uh, technologies and other countries like you know, Colombia, Jamaica, and so on, they don't, they are unable to do these things which we are talking about, that divide is going to become 
bigger and bigger and bigger and after a while it becomes it becomes very hard to you know uh, take control of that so there is a very uh, challenging question are there affordability uh, carolina spoke about and uh, you can link it with the previous points i was making about the infrastructure uh, where the money is going to come from and and so on carolina also spoke about iot internet of things that is very interesting topic just run a google search if you are not familiar with the with the term iot internet of things and read on that it's basically it is saying that everything is connected on the on the internet in, in easy words but thanks very much it would it is a good practice to talk about your own countries also you know this uh, just like carolina nothing to be you know if, if we are saying that Colombia. Colombia is a beautiful country. Uh, people are amazing there. Same is Jamaica. is a is a wonderful place. But every country has its own strengths and weaknesses. So these are some areas where uh, where uh, where um, where maybe uh, we need to we need to improve. So it's, uh, don't take anything personally. So if we say something about you know about a country, it is we are not we are not. We are not saying anything against any country here. We are just trying to discuss a couple of couple of things. So take every comment in a light mood and don't take anything personally. Yeah. Uh, yes. Please keep on going. Uh, okay. Uh, I wanna. Sorry to interrupt. No, I just have one more final point that I thought um, that. Also, if this is implemented in a country like Colombia, that then also should be like back up with security because probably like the dealer people, they're going to try to take it because this is like pricey. Then oh, yes. <laughs> you have to oh, think yes. of all of these things in a place like Colombia. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah of course, it. of course, of course. Same goes for Jamaica and these type of countries. Very good contribution. Yes. Uh, see, there's, there's so many issues out there now. Now you would you it's very easy to criticize like some country oh this country is not doing this this country is not doing that it's very easy to criticize but what wh how to do there are so many things it's it's difficult it's difficult yeah, very difficult yeah but the idea should be if we should just strive and try to see what is the best thing we can do in in that situation that is that is the most one can one can do uh, yes please. Okay, in that point, I wanna like ask a rather a political question about the topic because, like, governments and organizations are tend to uh, use that technology to prevent maybe uh, crimes, but the problem is the killing of the source of the crime in this point. Uh, for example, that Carolina mentioned in Colombia, people even get that technology to uh, because if it uh, it is something valuable. So like we ask that question, uh, if we use that technology to like blame people to catch them and uh, to take them into the prison or educate them or give them to uh, give them enough opportunity to, to develop themselves because if that technology is applied in like uh, schools uh, to educate the people from the beginning like it can be more useful I think and also that um, even the arms companies are selling guns so like uh, terrorist organizations have also that technology so I think the question mark is how and in what purpose we are using that technology. Amazing points, amazing points, um, great points, Kubra. Um, uh, and uh, this uh, second point Kubra made, uh, you can do some research on this now. Uh, like uh, terrorist organizations, yes, they are terrorists and involved in uh, bad activities coming from all different types of religions and countries and ethnicities yes and uh, who, where are they getting their ammunition weapons is uh, is the select few countries which are which are giving them and one of them is uh, uh, all respect to united states of america they are superpower of course and not trying to say anything against any country at all but this is this is this is a fact and you can check it that uh, united states is uh, is is fighting the war against terrorism and they are also selling the weapons to the terrorists uh, in one way or another 
through mediations to mediatory countries and so on. They are select countries. And why they are doing it? Because it is a billion, multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, and every country needs uh, financial. Uh, what, made, what makes US the superpower? It is finance. Uh, and you can just look at how much money United States of America spent in, uh, in fighting COVID-19. Trillions of US dollars, trillions of US dollars they have put in the system to save themselves from COVID-19. Trillions. Yeah. So they have that type of budget. How they are going to find that budget? They will, uh, so is it is it ethical to sell guns or something like? No. And US will also say this. The US president or anyone is not going to come and say, oh, yes, we should sell guns. No. Why do I want it? But be, behind the door, they will have to. Why? Because they need that financial security. Why they need financial security? To do implement in other things which are of benefit for them. Otherwise, they will not have funds like countries like Colombia, countries like Jamaica, and so on. List is huge. Yeah. So this is this is a very interesting uh, dilemma there to uh, to think about. And the Cobra also uh, made uh, another point. Um, um, which I lost uh, track of, uh, but I'm sure you heard that. So think about that. That was also a very interesting point. Yes, uh, and if you guys can open your uh, camera also, if, if that is not too much to ask. <laughs> so that would be nice to see you guys also and interact, if that is possible. Yes, please, next one. Uh, yes, Mr. Tafsin. Hello, hear me? Please go ahead. Yeah, you say that the uh, don't criticize any countries, but in I saw in your message listed that someone is uh, comments against the country. So is it good? Kindly check. I this. have not. Okay, I have not seen the seen the comments uh, yet. I was just interacting with them, but. If someone has uh, made that comment, I apologize on their behalf. It's just you know in the light mood. I'm sure maybe this. I've not seen it. What they what they said. I will see it shortly. But uh, please, guys, be nice to everyone, and it's okay to have fun. But don't uh, don't say anything against anyone. And even if someone says anything, don't take it personally. I would say like I am coming from uh, I am Muslim and I come from Pakistan. And feel free to say whatever you want to say. I will not take any yeah. offense, offense, but I am like that. But other friends can be, you know, especially Excuse me. Uh, we it are doesn't matter. on this. Excuse me, it doesn't matter where you're from, but the in the, in, the, in these classes, the we are the, how can I say, the a, a student and the um, um, teachers and conversation. But the uh, against the saying about the countries, is it, uh, how can I say that? Is it the gentleman behavior or some? Well, one should be mindful of, of the comments, what whatever you know you are making about any country should be mindful anyways, but it's taken, take it in a light mood if anyone, anyone said anything. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, I had a few points. And uh, uh, there's been a lot of uh, good discussion already about ethics. And obviously, the hardest part is finding the right balance between what is ethical and what is, let's say, useful. Because as a human beings, we tend to want what is comfortable and easy, like we criticize sometimes with artificial intelligence, but at the same time, we use it so easily with the phones, like unlocking the phone with fingerprints on or our faces. And yeah. by doing so, we give access to the phone companies and who knows yes. where we agree to do, the, do so and giving that access. And, but at the same time, we also use those same things to our passports, at least in, in Europe. So it, it helps us, but at the same time, we give some of our like freedom to those things so we could use them. Is it ethical? 
sometimes it also helps if something happens to us in in other countries we are more easily recognized like um in in korea because i'm now in here um there were some instances where some of the exchange students got in the accident and they didn't have any real documentation yet that they are in a country and so the police um force kind of went through the airport footages to find that he is rightfully in the country and they had multiple photos of him entering the country rightfully is it ethical you can question it but at the same time it helps the situation move more easily forward in his favor and he didn't need to do a lot of hard work to prove that he was in here rightfully so the technology it can of course it can take some freedom and it has ethical problems but we also use it to our own advantages so easily and with the with the uh, terrorist comments, yes, um, terrorists do use also the same technology, uh, especially in, in the uh, weaponry. But so do technically all the armies, because we also do use money on those technologies, like drones with, uh, with cameras. They also recognize faces already. And oh, yes. Yeah, so it's, it's we use them, so of course the bad guys use them too. So we cannot really criticize either <laughs> if we also use the same technology. So it's, it's not about who uses it because we have already created it and we have created it exactly for that reason. Excellent, just... excellent contribution. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, uh, thanks very much for this. And think about these these pointers which our friend just made, like about about data. Like uh, these companies, like I am recalling one friend uh, mentioned this in their reflection also, like the data collected uh, by WhatsApp, Facebook, Google all these amazon amazon why amazon is such a big business on on what premises it became such a big business it is because it is collecting data looking at their consumer behavior over a period of time you buy a book from amazon they give you what other books you are going to like on on what basis they are able to do that it's they are, they are collecting the data over there and they are using it for their advantage now please read on this uh, facebook uh, uh, playing with the regulation, Facebook not uh, not uh, being uh, not securing the data properly, leakage of data and so on. Uh, I am recalling uh, Facebook's owner, Honorable Mark Zuckerberg. I think he was called in court and he had to answer some some questions. Uh, the company was also fined. Uh, you can run a Google search right now and read about that if you are not familiar with those type of stories. Uh, so and they say that they are going to protect the data, but just like Eleanor is is uh, guiding the discussion, that uh, they have the data. They they have. We don't know what what is happening with that data. We they are saying that they are not going to. Uh, it is just like you know. It is just like you have a you have you have you have your house, and in that house there is a little small room, and uh, you tell everyone, well, I don't go there. I'm not going to do, go there. Uh, but you have access to the room in the middle of the night when everyone is sleeping if you just go there and you just speak in the room to see what is happening in the room you can do that and human human humans are like they want to know what is happening that curiosity is always there like what is happening so if someone want to go in and look at the data uh, in the companies like facebook and so on of course i'm not saying that they do it that is not what i'm saying i'm saying if they want to do it it is just like a little room in their house where they can always go maybe they will not but who knows we can cannot be certain on that we cannot be certain but we can we can trust them yes and 
but just like Eleonora very nicely said that that is the balance she spoke about balance she spoke about uh, we are comfortable what is easy for us we tend to do those, those type of things so a very interesting pointer there yes uh, but let uh, yes next one I wanted to add something uh, just, if I may uh, uh, shall I proceed so it's Marianne Okay, I just wanted to raise a point actually that using an artificial intelligence or rather misusing an artificial intelligence for any bad reason should be also on targeted audience. You don't just go and uh, spy on any household on earth, yeah? You do this one targeted, which is the downside, yes? Because it will still take um well how, how to put it well yeah it will stay it will still take some um um uh, some work to target the target yeah so mm -hmm. if we're thinking from risk management perspective what is the likelihood that a a, a normal person or a stand or a standard household is actually um being um impacted negatively um, from uh, uh, from a misuse of artificial intelligence versus uh, the benefits that one can get into just their everyday life. If mm -hmm. if we're just thinking about that the likelihood of something bad is happening for a normal person, rather something well, all the benefits that this will deliver, I think is also something that um, will be driving the 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 the, the society well in common in general uh, means mm. to be leaning more towards the use of artificial intelligence and then it's just i don't think we can echo enough the, the to strike the right balance but that is true for that is true for everything for every medicine for every decision if it is mm. yeah if it is not limited or controlled it can only be, it, it could always cause a bad attack the same would be for for AI. Very true, guys. Please pay attention to the comments our friend made because she has considerable uh, knowledge of what she's talking about, and she also works with defense and so on. So, pay attention and reflect on uh, what she said. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, um, now I will go ahead. So, um, I just want to share an experience before I touch upon my points. A friend of mine has a household, a big household, and in order to keep security, because they have people working for them, they install cameras in each and every room, except the bathroom, obviously. But this already gives such an uh, unsecure feeling to the human because you're monitored each and every moment. Even if you know, okay, your friend is only watching it, and they ensure you they don't watch it. They only watch it when the person are working in the house. Mm -hmm. I was so uncomfortable. I, I can't even tell it. I, I, I couldn't like mm -hmm. act like my normal self. And I think although I'm I'm really trusting technology, but you never know because you don't want to monitor everything. There are obviously uncomfortable situations. That's the same when you mm -hmm. present something, but the presentation will be will be videoed, and then you are like really embarrassed by what you each and every mistake you made so oh, that's yes. the point i want to touch upon because face recognition has a lot of benefits and we were only focusing on the impact it has when when uh, you get the outcome but what does it have cause as an impact to the society because when i enter a uh, shopping mall or or, or uh, an airport i would definitely not act the same as i as if i would if there was no face recognition because you know um people can maybe call up uh, different data which was collected about you so you feel like okay you have to act on your best because otherwise i don't know maybe your future empl employer will see something they don't like about you so i think the whole society and the behaviors and values will change so maybe that's a point people should address when talking about um trust because um, yeah, the, the dilemma Kibra mentioned, that, that's the one I want to touch upon. And the other point is, in the video they mentioned, you know, the data is only stored for 
a period of time that's deleted, but how they ensure that and how can I believe it? Because you already said it's like a room in a house. You, can, you should not enter, but you can enter. And mm -hmm. people are curious. I'm also curious. And I think a lot of people see that you do a lot of research on others, but then you think about, okay, and you don't want to, you don't want anyone to know about that, but then you think, okay, mm -hmm. but I would like to know who did research on myself. So mm -hmm. I think that's the dilemma and uh, that's really hard to, to address, but I think that's the point we should address because the future is like, is like we, we saw in the videos or even mm -hmm. um, more of that. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent point. And is if someone is writing dissertation or something like that, this is this very interesting topic which Iqlal is talking about, like society and impact of society. And I'm seeing, you know, uh, pay attention to the comment section also because sometimes they are making comments there, like Ubra mentioned, security and freedom dilemma. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. Mary, I'm saying the cost of the cost of freedom. Yeah, so these are very. Uh, can, can I remarks. add something? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so uh, uh, with fa face recognition, recognition uh, it comes into um, uh, this reliability and credibility of uh, face recognition. Because, um, for example, um, my son's, uh, my son's uh, bike was stolen from metro station and uh, there was CCTV camera and then I reported to the police and in CCTV footage, the criminal because the uh, cycle was very near to the city footage so they captured the picture but the problem is the reliability of the picture because a uh, face recognition uh, works with uh, like the uh, when it is recognizing the face what is the emotion at that time so the face has different kind of emotion with different angles so it is not easy to recognize and there is always a doubt so in final stage, I got the report that police is not uh, confirmed with the picture with the person. Of course, in Finland, they have database of every person. So they, I think they tried to match it. I don't know if they tried or not. But here comes the reliability and credibility of the face recognition uh, devices and the pictures we are getting. So this is one point which came into my mind. Mm, very good very absolutely correct you are identifying uh, and true, and true there point. is uh, one, one more thing that a uh, phase uh, its reliability has uh, the demographic is also impact uh, has also impact on uh, phase recognition technology like african people are le less recognizable in these kind of devices mm -hmm. as compared to the as compared to the wh uh, whiter people so these kind of research have been done that uh, uh, how these uh, softwares are working with the with different demographics, with different skin colors and with different features people. So the because human face has different kind of complex complexity. So captured all the complexity, including emotion at that time, because person has different uh, face emotions every time. So mm. this thing. So it affects the credibility of this of the of the device and software. So these kind of mm. things I want to discuss or add. Oh yes, very absolutely correct. There are these are uh, challenges and what you mentioned about different people coming from different ethnic background. Those type of challenges challenges can can come. Very true. Uh, please pay attention, everyone, to these type of uh, conversations. Yes, keep on going, please. Uh, yeah, so there has been actually quite a quite a lot mentioned earlier, which I would want to touch upon them too. But uh, what I was thinking on the concern is that actually, like, how can we make the same kind of mistake, like, by meaning that, like, the purpose we are looking for, you know, using or implementing AI is actually to better our day-to-day -day life, but then at the same time, we're actually teaching. Of course, it's a code, it's, it's been written, and we're actually teaching. And uh, to like when it comes to, you know, the video that you showed us, like how it was used, it's just that it actually concerned me. And what actually what concerned me more is, is when institutions or government actually funding on that, knowing this could be used 
uh, for uh, for any any wrong really purpose reasons. So I think I think that's my issue. Like when when these governments or institutions, you know, would fund and use that, it 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 comes because uh, I think it was Carolina who mentioned about uh, if this would have been used in Colombia or in you know for in other countries. But then mm -hmm. we have to we have to think what we are prior prioritizing. Like what are we putting for? Of course, I think this third country, world country, let's say for example Colombia or some other country, uh, you need to prioritize actually what where to put the money, and where where to fund the most. Like does it help? Although you know implementing these special recognitions, or would it help more to actually try to prevent first? The problems, rather than like just securing maybe a small group of people like uh, or or in that matter. So um, yeah, I think it depends how it is used, and we should really and of course like when when I'm talking about like putting first like prioritizing and then the well developed countries could actually then prioritize on keeping their data safe and then uh, regulating it how it is used. So I think everybody should play that main part of when we're actually really growing growing on this technology. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Very good. And worth reflecting these points, like, you know, how to make these things secure, like maybe countries are working on it and advancing it, but if it goes into the wrong hand and not just uh, Abel, other friends have also made this pointer in today's uh, discussion and in reflections also uh, that you know the not falling in the in the wrong hands and in the chat also I'm seeing many friends have mentioned this this type of sentiment so uh, very good points yes and please uh, pay attention to the chat section also because some friends are uh, giving good interesting things there for example Jesse put in the a good read on masks and AI and uh, and so on so look into those look in the chat and and you know this is very good opportunity for all of us because you know different uh, way of thinking is being shared different viewpoints are shared you are at least getting an idea how other people think and this is not something which is very easily easily comes it's a good opportunity i feel that we have this type of atmosphere here where people are willing to share their their ideas and we have time and to listen and, and to reflect and even if you, 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 again, I want to say it's not if you if you feel that some comment is not 100% accurate, don't have nothing to really worry about it. It's just uh, reflecting on it and trying to because any every comment would have some type of thing which you can take. And even if you don't take anything, this knowledge is going to stay with you. Like how how people coming from Colombia thinks, how people coming from Jamaica thinks, how people coming from Turkey things and and so on and so forth. At least the and give, but again, don't stereotype that this is how people coming from <laughs> X country uh, thinks. But I think uh, good exercise and we thank everyone um, for you know participating and sharing their thoughts. Yes, please continue, Lime. Yeah, I just wanted to come back to a point that was made earlier that the use of face recognition in American schools is a great idea because of school shoots, which is one I don't disagree with. But I think it's a great example to show the levels of legal complexities that we are facing with AI because, yes, you may think the use of recognition, but having worked in schools myself in the UK, there's a lot of safeguarding involved. For example, we had to have briefings on a monthly basis if there was any kids who were being safeguarded where we couldn't share their image anywhere within the school just in case it was spotted by an adult um, mm. or we weren't allowed to post their image in a monthly bulletin paper we handed out to all the parents kind of thing I think mm. I think that kind of the use of this technology kind of shows the complexities and legal issues involved with the the things we're looking oh. to use because school because I don't disagree it's something that needs to be stopped but you have to consider uh, consider these legal ramifications that come mm. along with it and protecting young children or adults and using their image rights and stuff like that. Mm, excellent, like always, Lime. So yeah, look at this. Uh, we were talking about regulation and those type of things, but 
time is talking about legal issues the, the law is now involved in this and the right of the child and so on those and parents have their concern and if a, if a, if a person is of certain age they are 10 12 14 different laws are applied there for, for safety and uh, security reasons and other type of you know there are other type of things happening with with children but all over the, the all over would the vary per, the regulation uh, would vary also per industry so that, that's the, the normal breakdown anyway for, for for anything you can't have a common sense regulation apl applied across all, all the industries in in the world so this is how it should be and this just shows uh, how advanced or in advance the different industry or different country it is in deploying and i think this is what will actually add to the uh, duration of the actual um, um adoption of ai actually in the world at the end because you have all that many aspects it's it's the it's the industry it's the, it's the different types of industry the humanity the the and all the aspects that co come along and then and then now what what our friends are saying link it with the laws and regulation in other type of like developing countries where laws and all those things are there on a piece of paper but are they implemented or not even if you are not talking about ai so that is again a challenge so in countries like you know uh, we are talking about uk here specifically so maybe the uh, laws is is uh, everyone is has to follow the law is uh, most of the times if not every time if you compare it with another country which is developing country where corruption rate is high and so on you will see that people are involved in bad practices and so on but i'm not saying people don't get involved in bad practices in uk or something but if they are caught they have to deal with certain situations which in other countries maybe people can get away more easily maybe yeah so uh, having laws and regulations and then implementing it also that again is going to uh, give a uh, different twist to what our friends are saying but good points mariana lime very good yes yes please go ahead what I was thinking of was also from one of the earlier topics we had concerning the facial recognition of um, criminals and terrorists is um, who chooses which data to fill the AI with. So what pictures they put into this system, maybe these will be um, one sided or biased even at the beginning as the creator puts it in. And that can be connected to the legal um, issues that Liam also um, sad because do we have an instance who controls the data that is put in and controls if um, it is really fair or if it is biased from the beginning ah very very interesting Yasmin. very interesting very interesting and personally speaking i feel the same way i feel i do feel you you can feel the way you want because you know we are a lot of people 40 people are here so they will have but i somewhere I understand that they have the regulations to control bias or something, but I, the way I look at things, is natural tendency comes in. Your bias, natural bias, comes in somewhere. So these questions, which our friend is raise, raising, they are uh, are very. So maybe a representation from all different type of people is very important when we are thinking about uh, uh, some type of regulations law or government related or something and many times it is it is it is uh, it is just uh, it is just not it is just not there but increasingly uh, awareness is at least being generated you are people more and more people are talking about uh, diversity more and more people are talking about inclusion like including a different type of groups at least they are talking about it but I would say we are far off from uh, where we should where we should be maybe and uh, different countries have different situations yes sandra please go ahead uh, hi i'm uh, i was surprised uh, it's really so easy like in the video showing a photo and become access so i was asking me how meaningful the system is when it's so easy to bypass oh, and yeah. um does it already works after a cosmetic operation? So um, I'm uh, asking me about the meaning of the system. 
Oh, you are you are right. And in the in the comment also, some friend I think mentioned that you can do the facial surgery and what is going to where, where what is going to happen. And there are some movies on on this also. Like uh, I saw some old movie. Uh, I think two three years ago. I think its name was Face Off. So you can maybe um, uh, if you can find a good print, you can watch it. Face Off. So what what happens is that they they off the face they take off the face of a person and put it on some other person so there is a policeman and there is a criminal so they exchange the faces and it it their life changes <laughs> that is a, I guess, again you know and these things uh, these things are but but that is why looking at china is i think is is interesting case study because they they are quite advanced in doing these things but then of course there are some issues there because uh they use it of course for their own advantage so they would have data so if someone post some comment against against government or something like that then uh they can identify and pinpoint them and you know put some restrictions on them so um, good points there yes next one atma I want to ask something about the face recognition part about um, a security services. Uh, let's say, uh, like Enora mentioned, it's making our lives easier. Yeah, but what if uh, their system is hacked by someone else? And at that point, we don't know who has our information, who has our names, addresses or like that. So. I think if we combine cybersecurity and the regulations together, and if we work on that, at that point, maybe we can increase the trust part and we can really uh, implement these models to um, everywhere in our lives. Mm -hmm. No, for sure, very good point. And thanks for linking it with other points like trust factor and so on. Uh, very good, yes, that is that is how it, it should be, yeah. And look at the very interesting points our friends are making in the in the chat section. Like you know, there is there is going to be price for everything. So you, it, no matter which side you are going to take, if you are going to go for incorporating facial recognition and so on, then you will have to pay the price. If you are going to say that we are going to make the data private and not going to uh, release or put the facial images in the databases and so on, then we will be a little bit left left out in the race of AI. So yes, any path we are going to take would have its uh, its own advantages and disadvantages. Yes, next one, please. Yeah, see a, a popular debate uh, in the use of artificial intelligence for facial recognition is the disproportionate criminalization of people of color in some countries because historically uh, law enforcement agencies and their judicial systems have been racially biased and there's an unfair representation of people of color in crime photos or the mock shot upon which the AI systems rely for analysis. For instance, uh, IBM was uh, forced to discontinue the use of their facial recognition technology last year after claims from the Black Lives Movement that it was being used for racial profiling. Mm. I, th I think these are important uh, ethical considerations. However, sometimes or most times, it is too much force over nothing. It is true the technology makes mistakes a lot of times, and an innocent person uh may become embarrassed for being a wrongful subject of a criminal investigation because an organization is relying on some bots for reports but that really should be as far as it should go i mean decision makers should not make hard decisions just yet because of reports from artificial intelligence and as someone Thanks mentioned in, someone mentioned in the chat uh about having a uh, your name in some terrorist database forever because a mistake was made. There should be an opportunity for a right to be forgotten, just like you have with the EU General Data Protection Regulation. You should be able to request for, challenge and request for such data to be removed from the systems. But it is wrong to just cancel a technology of this nature because of this issue it's currently having. I mean, it is true use that 
these, these systems can be improved. And minor issues like this should not be placed at par with more complex issues of the technology like it's being used to profile Rohingya Muslims, for instance. Of course, <laughs> it is easy for me to, to, to argue in this manner because I'm African and it also yeah. affects me negatively. So I may not get as much backlash as a white person, for instance, would get. But generally, I think every technology of this nature should be given a chance to be improved. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Very, very nice. I loved listening to what you had to say. And I'm sure all of us, you know, uh, if we listen to what you are saying with an open mind, there are very nice points you have made. But uh, this uh, fair, racial profiling, our friend used the term racial profiling. And that is that is that is uh, being used against uh, different type of races. Uh, recently, what happened in in US, uh, you can look into that. Uh, there was a hashtag trending, uh, Black Lives Matter. I'm sure you have seen it. If you have not seen it, you can just run a search on it. Black Lives Matter. It's still going on in in some countries. What happened there? Uh, it was a tragic incident done by one person, but then how the movement started and uh, because it was the, the the communities are, you know, feeling deprived over the years. It's accident don't happen in that instance. Anything which happens, it don't just happen in that in that instance. It is building up, building up, building up, building up. And that, that then a point comes and it it breaks. If you look at the history of the world, that is how it happens. Anything which happens. The building up, building up, and then one time it just explodes. People are over it. Same thing happened with Black Lives Matter. Uh, so many around the world, people, uh, people because there is, there is, uh, there is. Uh, now you know we we can say that everyone is everyone is equal. Everyone is equal, and I, we would like to think that everyone is equal, but that is not the truth. That is not the reality of the world we live in. That is that is how it is. So is uh, the darker the shade of your of your of your and please bear with me because I'm going to make some controversial remarks here. So take it in a, in a in a light fashion. Uh, you don't agree. No problem. You don't have to agree with me at all. Just making some observations here. Uh, so the lighter your skin tone is, the more good looking you are considered. The better you are considered. Even in some societies, the richer you are considered. And it is this, there are studies, <laughs> research papers on it. You just have to run Google search on, on that. Uh, even in countries which, which are maybe maybe white countries, certain skin tones, certain hair, hair shades, hair colors, uh, even in Africans, if your hair is straight, it is you are different, considered different. If you are if you are here, are African African here, you are considered different. So these are these are the things which are which are which are there in the society. And will they will they go away? Well, they should. They, maybe they will one day. But as we speak, this this about religions, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stereo, stereotyping religions. These are these are. Uh, these are these are the reality. Did did I face? Did, do, have I faced that? Not that much, not that much. Uh, but I see around and see uh, see how how things are happening, and I do see that these things are happening in uh, in the world. So maybe it is not happening with you per se, but just look around and observe that you know we, we treat different different people differently. We don't do we treat everyone same way. Do you ask yourself, do you treat everyone in the same way? Do you do you when you are speaking, when you are in a, in a restaurant and you are there is a there is a server who is just doing a regular job there. Do you speak with them as nicely, as politely, with as much generosity as you are going to speak with your boss in an interview? No, maybe not. Maybe you do. That is very good. I'm not judging anyone, but Generally, generally speaking, I'm not talking about you guys. All of you are very nice, sophisticated people. <laughs> not talking about you. Outside of the room, other people in the world, they are like they are discriminated. So now, when this thing will be there, then 
we can always say that we'll take out the biases when we are putting in the data in the system because all this artificial intelligence is nothing without the data but then the, our friends have raised these questions that which images are going to go in you heard them i did not say it our colleagues here said that which images are going to go there which are not going to go there our friends mentioned that you know the uh, african features come in differently in different formats and yeah, that that is how it is so it's uh, the the uh, and in that in that with that hindsight what our friend just mentioned i think that was that is worth repeating and maybe we should we should write it down somewhere that every technology should be given some chance to improve because in the beginning always in the beginning when you are starting something new you are going to face these type of challenges now these issues about security about breaches all these are real issues uh, discrimination and all of that but that should not as our friend mentioned that should not stop us uh, from uh, from uh, from spending time in improving it uh, and this is this is very good very good uh, very good uh, comment coming from uh, if i can say our friend is coming from black ethnic background and uh, if you look at the overall scheme of things in the world uh, uh, it is the more pressure is on the blacks and they should they sh they are if if any discrimination is happening heavy, heavily it is <laughs> against them unfortunately this is how it is it should not be like that but still he is saying that you know give it a chance it will improve over a period of time we need to teach it it is just like it is just like a small child yes ai is like a small child you teach it teach it best practices do this don't do this do this don't do this and and so on over a period of time the the advantages are definitely more than uh, this disadvantages if you look at the overall scheme of things and last point i want to make on this please bear with me what is the other choice we have do you think that we have a choice okay in this room we can decide that because of these issues we are not going to go with with this whatever is happening but the world is going even even if europe decides that we are not going to go in this and we are just going to take time to do the regulations make it more and more and more ethical yes you are going to make it very ethical but by the time you are going to make it very ethical where is going to be us where is going to be china where, what is going to happen in the world now it's, it's a choice and this is a choice which you and me are not going to make it is our political leadership is going to make that especially coming from democratic countries so now uh, this is what it is yes next one please um when you show the slide that's one point is the ethics and the pursuit of artificial intelligence so my question is that the uh, if ethics and consciousness cannot be developed in human mentality so how technology can control the crime or that kind of activity bad activities if you uh, i can give you example as a us so in the, in the technologically us develop before 10 years before 20 years you can compare so does it make it sense the it within 10 years or 20 years the crime is increasing or decreasing ah very interesting very interesting so what is the impact of is the crime is the crime with all these technologies with all the advancement in the world the very very nice with them yeah very, very interesting thing to think about like yes have we advanced over the years? Yes, as a human race, even if you don't want to think about AI, as we have advanced. But where is the society overall? Is the, our morals have gone up? Moral values have gone up or gone down with time? As we have, we have advanced in terms, we have become richer and richer and more prosperous. What is happening with our moral, ethical values? Crimes are increasing or decreasing? What is happening? Yeah, <laughs> this is the answers are uh, very clear. <laughs> to to look at so very good interesting point yes next one please yes i wanted to say about uh, the face recognition in china it's easier to have that in a country like china because they already have a big database uh, because they have the social credit system implanted so uh, 
they already keep a track on what the people there do and uh, yeah, the bad things and they have a blacklist with it as well. And about uh, earlier was mentioned that uh, companies use AI for uh, reviewing resumes, but I think that will not always work in every field, like I'm in IT field, and mm -hmm. if uh, AI will review my resume, it, the chance is big that I will get rejected because I'm a woman, because most mm -hmm. people in that company are, are men, so mm -hmm. it will still not work 100% properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very, very fine comment. And but maybe should think that R should be really aim for hundred percent in these type of things. Is if if yes, we should aim for hundred percent. Why not? But if the if it is maybe ninety five percent, maybe ninety ninety percent should be go ahead and you know see what is what is happening with the with the technology. Maybe maybe that is something to reflect on. I am looking at the chat now, and you guys are making very interesting uh, comments and also enjoying yourself in the chat, and I am happy about that. Nothing is wrong in having fun, and uh, as you are making the comments, like Rosie is saying, you can reject the those those type of systems and live in small communities. That is yes, and people yes in America, for example, people are there who go in the far distant place and they get a farm, farm and they try to live a natural. There is a natural life. There is a, a natural life, like uh, natural lifestyle away from the uh, pollution. The noise pollution, all of those, they you know go there. Even in other countries, like uh, I am aware that, for example, in Denmark, people go in, in the in the in the wild and spend their time there, a couple of years. And uh, I was looking at there are some people who are made some YouTube channels out of there, and they post their activities there. So that is that is uh, that is very interesting uh, lifestyle, maybe. And Sherry is saying, being always aware that someone is watching you is not nice. Maybe there will be technology to deal with it as well. <laughs> That's very nice because who is going to who is going to defeat uh, technology? Technology is going to defeat technology. Yeah. In the reflections, uh, let me share. One friend made a very interesting uh, comment. Uh, uh, I was reflecting on your uh, on your reflections. I was reflecting on your reflections uh, before going to bed uh, last night, uh, uh, and I was enjoying it. Uh, 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 that friend mentioned that um, um, well, I lost the train of my thought <laughs> because I enjoyed it too much. It's just gone out of my uh, out of my memory. Yes, please. Next one, Monica. Hey, I think I lost my point as well because I've been <laughs> okay. listening so, That's okay. That's okay. so long and reading those uh, chats. Uh, but I was just thinking and and maybe a little bit scaring that can that AE thing stops before you're having a child in a, you know, in a hospital, and then when it's there, they just scan it and tell you what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, your son is going to be this, and your daughter is going to do that, and and then you can just choose, you know. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, amazing. that would be really scary. I have three daughters, <laughs> and sometimes I just think that maybe if you could just, you know, return them, but you can. <laughs> but like, I would never do, even I would return, uh, do that, you know, that you scan and then you know, or a things that it knows, you know, the, the feelings and what's going to happen, then is it the bad, bad guy or a good or things like that. Get the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yesterday yeah. there was that, it can, it can, uh, the AE can uh, like recognize the, the feeling and, um, and today that if there's a bad guy, they can know it. 
even normal person and normal person can be really really bad if something happens and about that uh, facial recognizing in the school i think it's good but then i was thinking about our school in finland we don't i haven't ever seen a school in here that have fences or anything so kind of whoever can come quite far and and at least in a couple of times the the person who attacked was a student mm. so then it doesn't work because the system lets the guy in or a girl <laughs> so yeah but i think it, it's in a some places it's really good like my godson's in us that's mm -hmm. good that no that you know that you can just let anyone in to the the campus and stuff like that mm -hmm. or the classroom mm -hmm. yeah i lost my point <laughs> <laughs> well, you did not lo lose it at all. You are, I loved what you said, really. Let me tell you, the wonderful things you, you have said. And uh, um, as you were saying, I was reflecting and you, you said one line and I want to repeat that line for everyone. Uh, please pay attention to this. Uh, Monica said that a normal person can be very bad in certain situations. A normal person can be... <laughs> very bad in certain situations and certain situations triggers wrong behaviors even in normal person and good guys yeah so maybe not everyone will really relate with it also uh, but uh, uh, and i hope no one is able to relate with also that you, no one of us uh, have that experience but this is very profound uh, statement especially in the context of trying to understand what is ethical and what is right and what is wrong. And other things which Monica mentioned are excellent points like, you know, when you are and uh, let me share my thoughts on that, what you already heard Monica and uh, let me share, add my thoughts on top of that. Uh, I, I fully have, I fully have this feeling that in the future, this is going to happen. What Monica is saying, like when you will have a child, you will you will you will you will you will be able to know to a certain extent that what what this so people will not say you have a you have a you have a daughter or you have a son of course they will tell you the gender but this is not how the news will be broken the news it is a very big possibility not in near future of course but somewhere along the line it's very possible that the doctor is going to come and say oh you have a doctor, you have a lawyer, you have a, you have an engineer, you have a lazy person, <laughs> you have a very active person, <laughs> you, you have whatever, you know, this is going to happen. Yeah. You have a criminal born. This, this child is going to become a criminal. <laughs> yeah. So of course things change, you know, human beings are a species which can adapt and adopt. And uh, we, we learn from our experience, we unlearn, we relearn, yes. But at that point of time, looking at the genetic makeup, looking at the dispositions, the technology will be able to maybe, hopefully, maybe say, now uh, Monica is of course saying that this is a, this is a scary situation. Uh, uh, now different people are, for me, this is an exciting situation, like, uh, to know that this is what you have now <laughs> that would be exciting for for me uh, but of course for other people uh, like monica said and uh, we we appreciate what how she she was able to bring her uh, share her thoughts with us because what she mentioned is kind of new to uh, what the debate we had yesterday and the debate is the new idea she is bringing in so we thank her for that but yes i i agree with uh, what she's saying it's uh, it can be intimidating um, for many people but personally speaking for me it is excited and very likely these things are are going to happen thanks monica yes next one
Oh yes, this Hello. is this Can is uh, one, second. Uh, one, one second, Valenti, one second. Yeah, this yeah, you see this this last comment uh, is somebody saying so we should also search on astrology and uh, AI relationships. Yeah, it's a very very interesting. Why not? You should. Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. Sorry for that. Yep. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, so uh, my interests are in con human cognition and uh, yeah. consciousness. And yeah. uh, the interesting topic on ethics is one is uh, AI's own own rights. I mean, uh, when we develop AI to the point uh, of sophistication that it can start to uh, where we can talk that we have created life. So uh, at what point the AI has its own rights and uh, mm. uh, also uh, the question about is it ethical to program emotions for mm. the AI systems? Because mm. who are we decide? Uh, who are we to decide? who gets to uh, feel things and who doesn't. Uh, we are kind of playing God at that point. So it's really uh, interesting topic. Very interesting, very interesting comments. Very, uh, and uh, before I say something, I'm loving your headphones, the red color that is coming out very nice. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, playing God, yes, when you are doing these type of things, it's a good commentary. But please run some search, everyone, on this uh, this terminology. Again, this is new thought, um, at least in our conversation. The rights of AI, the rights of AI. Uh, people are doing some some work. Uh, run some searches, and uh, well, I'm asking you to run these searches. But after running the searches, if you are you know stuck in something or something you can always write me email and then I can also send you some some part but uh, make notes of all these pointers our friends are are mentioning and you don't have to run searches on all of them just find the things which are more interesting to you and then run searches on them and that would be a good exercise yes the next please yeah hello hello yeah, I want to talk about this uh, facial recognition, which is important to avoid crime. Like, for example, in China and uh, Korea, I already like uh, using it. Uh, but um, I'm thinking because it might not be very accurate. For example, uh, I don't know if AI will recognize that someone is wearing a silicone, for example. Someone may want to commit a crime and use this and use a facial silicone. So I I don't think if AI were will recognize it. Then I watched one film that there was someone who wanted to set up uh, someone up. So he went and wear like a facial silicone. He designed it as and it looked very it look it, uh, it designed it to look like the person he wants to set up. And then mm. after the, it really looked like the person, he wore it, and then he went to commit the crime, and the wrong person was arrested. Mm. So yeah, um, that, that's why I'm thinking that maybe this area may not be that that's accurate when it comes to that. So I don't know if AI will recognize silicon. Like the video we watched, you find out that the picture of uh, of uh, when the man wants to open the door, he uses another mm. person's picture, and the door opened. Mm. So what if, for example, is putting on a silicone or so on this? Let's say like one of the teachers in school, something like that. Yes, even you know, attendance of the students, they can just you know, ask their ask their friends to just show their picture on the camera, and they'll say, okay, student has attended the attended the yeah. school, but the student has bunked and is gone with his girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever they want to do. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, very good, very good point. Uh, let's look at the chat maybe together because uh, very interesting. I'm sure you guys are uh, keeping a conversation there also, but for those of us who are just uh, talking and maybe not looking at the chat, is 
that Jesse is making, it's interesting thought that we are afraid of being watched, recorded in case our future employers see something we have done that they might not like. Yet many of post our drunken adventure on social media. So guys, be mindful of, of this. Whenever you are posting some picture on uh, on social media or something like that, you can always delete it, yes. But it goes somewhere in the record. So you don't want to uh, do those type of things. All those cameras too are used for the safety of people. It's just how much data would be misused by a private company and how to regulate it. That's exactly the point I see on the top that our messages are also being recorded. Please be aware. <laughs> <laughs> Choosing is perceived different <laughs> than, than being forced to. Uh, yes, I also think that the key idea is if it is our choice or not, uh, you can compare it to learning by choice or in school. In my opinion, even though there are some ethical issues, AI offers so much benefits for both societies and government. Yeah. Um, so this is, I think, this is, the, and this goes with with the same sentiment which our our friend uh, Tajiri was mentioning uh, that, you know, there's uh, these things, these issues are going to be there, but the idea is not to give up and uh, with collaboration, uh, try to first understand before, before implementing our ideas, we need to spend time in understanding how other people are thinking. And this is the platform for that, how other people are thinking. Uh, this knowledge which you are gaining is you not, you can't find it in a book or something like that, but uh, listening by, you know, so and, and then in, informing your own opinion. When we choose uh, using technology, we agree a social contract that do not convince us 100%. Question is who made these contracts? <laughs> contracts. Yeah, so you just, these contracts, you just, who reads them? No one really reads them. You just pick them and you say, okay, yes, I, 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 I will abide by the contract, but it's, they are long contracts they write before going into any type of service. No one really reads, reads it uh, and just stick it. So uh, this is, I would also like to know who make these type of contracts, who are those people and uh, are they really without any biases? Do they don't have any type of stereotypes against uh, different, uh, you know, uh, they, do they not? They don't do racial profiling. Well, it's good if they don't. That's fine. They should not. Yeah. But are they really not doing it? I don't know that. And uh, you might you might argue that yes, they do it. Otherwise, the technology will not be approved by the government regulation and so on. Yes, but the fact of the matter is that no one here knows. I don't know, you don't know. And there is no problem in not knowing. If you if you not knowing does not show any type of weakness or uh, lack of knowledge. Not knowing knows that you don't know something. So then you need to know about it. So that you go in the path of learning by saying that, well, I don't know. That the thing is that it should not be the case that you don't know forever. At least there you should start some type of path where you say, okay, I'll try to say what I can know and what I cannot know. We uh, cost for everything. The cost is our privacy. But at the same time, it gives us freedom and uh, comfort. And uh, some friends mentioned, you know, uh, Eleonora was mentioning, you know, we go for things which are comfortable, which are easy and balance and those type of things. When radio was intro introduced in past, uh, Lakshmi is giving us some history lessons, so let's pay attention. There were lots of people against against of it, thinking it it is as great threat. But with time and evolution, people will find out the way to tackle and solve the problem. Technology is always like that. In the beginning, there will be flaws, and all these flaws will be addressed with time. Everything have pros and cons. There is no perfect system. Only the things in, in thinking it critically help people to solve problem and come out with solution over a period of time with a lot of collaboration with a lot of open mindedness being open mindedness does not mean that you don't have your own opinion all of us do have our own opinion all i am saying hold your opinion loosely 
don't don't hold your opinions and your thoughts so tightly that you are unable to listen or appreciate what other people are 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 have to say ai is the course uh, coming and growing that's for sure just at what cost i do not know if we could enjoy the benefits of ai and still privacy at 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 time yeah that would be very nice enjoy the benefits and keep uh, privacy people are liking the ideas here everything has its price uh, privacy banking system in turkey it happened in some banking system yes run some searches and learn more about that i know of couple of examples uh, but i would like you to run some search uh, we have already lost our privacy so it should not be a big problem well this is <laughs> is something to reflect on because we are talking about privacy and so on but we are on whatsapp we are on different social medias uh, we use mobile phones uh, mobile phones have speakers uh, there is technology that the phone can be hacked and people can listen what is happening like my my phone is right there and it is on so there is technology that someone who knows the technology uh, have the competency skills they can hack my um my um uh, phone and then my phone is with me all the time just like your phone and they can hear what is happening in the in the thing of course now there is data protection and everything and the mobile phone companies have protection and the phone companies have protection and sometimes we can also buy those protections and make ourselves more secure uh but uh, you know there is always those of you who are from computer science background and many of you are and hacking is real thing hacking is real business people study and become hackers and hackers are the people now you you can say that hackers are bad people but no they are not because hackers are the people who who help uh, governments governments hire hackers uh, big companies hire hackers good hackers and they pay them a lot of good money they have decent jobs there so they can break into system and try to identify what are the loopholes in the system so uh you know, very interesting points uh, uh people have tendency to be afraid of something what they don't know or be familiar with um very good points eventually no matter what the future comes to we will find ways to adapt and continue to live on but it is important to start the process of evolution uh, how regulation and uncertainty are holding people back uh, from progress and, and not just me i uh, you guys also mentioned lime mentioned his comment was about that and other friends also mentioned that i agree with but also think that we need more discussion on in society so that all generations would understand and i would 100% agree with Uh, more discussion on society than some friend mentioned the how the society will be impacted by technology and just to bring a new point here how you know these little kids now little children uh, well children are little anyway so <laughs> bear with me but the children you know they 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 have access to what age children have mobile phones look in your surroundings uh, children they have people give them phones and they play games and they do all different type of surfing at a young age uh, across the world uh, parents just give phones to to the and so they are it's a different type of uh, they're going to grow up very different with a different type of knowledge um, you just need to uh, a child who is just you know is just maybe 9 10 and he's curious about about maybe the body parts of opposite opposite uh, gender just going to run a google search and all that information is going to at what age is a is a very 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 young uh so what you happen to ethics now we can argue that you know the parental control and all of those things in the in the devices and those type of things but they can always uh, get hang of some other device where parental control is not set and you cannot control the children all the time they are going to find a little movement for themselves the control is 
it's just you know you can't and then the way the lifestyle is parents are working children are on their own a lot of time they go to school they are influenced by other children so maybe you have good system of parenting but maybe the other friends uh, the child has in school they don't have uh, that type of uh, good parenting in that sense so they know they, so the exposure will be at a very early age about things which they should not be exposed to at, at such an early age and everyone learns about these things but at a certain age you should it's better if you know about it in a certain age so these are very interesting uh, so what is going to happen to the society impact um, afraid we can't just wait for next generation and so on i think it, it has already been part of syllabus and some courses here in technology yeah so please run the uh, what i'm trying to say is uh, do read the comment section and uh, have dialogue and share uh, you know knowledge and if you have the links you can also share that but let's come back to the voice yes eleonora uh, please go ahead next one um i had a kind of comment about what was said earlier about recruiting in a company with using the artificial intelligence when they kind of go through the resumes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it was said that it wouldn't work in the in the kind of areas of expertise if uh, the main main uh, gender would be either men or female that the majority of of workers would be either uh -huh. either or um well at least in big companies it, the reason why big companies have the resumes done in the their own websites in the internet uh -huh. is because uh, through there uh, the uh, HR department can always uh, click that the I doesn't uh, doesn't take consideration of the gender which they usually no. do they don't uh, they kind of skip through the age is very uh -huh. normal actually and yeah. the gender so that uh -huh. it it won't be it won't affect the actual decision and they will only go through the actual references and what are they actually qualified for the job so in those areas actually the the artificial intelligence do actually work it's just that as i think it has been mentioned that the that the workforce it's still kind of going towards to certain gender and so it just it automatically mm. goes like that it just most of the applicants are still to that particular gender. <laughs> it, it's yes. not because artificial intelligence would automatically kind of dictate that you cannot be applicant. It is that how how the application process works, unfortunately. Mm. But mm. of course, like like some governments have issue that there there needs to be fifty fifty in the mm. in the parliament mm. like. Like they have to have actually the same amounts of females and males, just mm. so that it would be kind of neutral. Mm. But then it's always about then again ethics. Is it ethical, or or is it right that you will be selected just because you're male or female because mm. they want to that specific to fill the quota, even mm. though somebody else would be more better fit for the job. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so of course, but I'm only talking about big companies that I'm familiar with, small yes. companies, especially if they don't filter through or, or maybe if they just want to be maybe less. <laughs> Let's yeah, neutral yeah, yeah. about the qualifications, then of course they yeah. can still kind of see through like, oh, you, you're not good enough because you're something that we don't, we are not looking for. Oh, yes. 
yes excellent excellent point and i you are you are just being humble that you are just talking about the companies you know but we know that based on our readings this is across the world these type of things quotas and these things which you are talking about these are uh, real challenges and uh, maybe many times the gender bias is not necessarily that people don't want to hire females it is just that maybe females sometimes in some countries they don't study that that discipline and sometimes boys are more into that discipline also so it comes from that also uh, but then we want to uh, go for equality also so it's a, it's a good observation there thanks for sharing yeah next one and i'm also looking at the chat as i'm talking with you guys so or rather listening to you lakshmi made this point google knows everything that what what we are doing uh, and you know i uh, I don't know if you have experienced this or not, but you turn on the notification on your phone on the Google Google app. You turn on the notification, and at the end of the month, it 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 sent me the report that all the places where I have been to in that month, and the first time when I when I got it, got that report in my email, I was not happy about it at all. Not at all. Not at all. Although I knew, but I just did not pay attention. and it was just turned on and when i got that email it, it it was giving me like the places all the places i went to all the you know the uh, shops i went to uh, and and so on a detailed report with the map with the time and all of those things and uh, so uh, now it depends you know are you are you as uh, i think uh, someone someone mentioned maybe kubra mentioned or someone else mentioned that it depends on where what type of places you go or what is your activity or not <laughs> if you if you if you go if you like to go to strange places and you don't want other people to know about it then of course you might be more uh, more careful about that it is just like your computer history do you are you comfortable that your parents or anyone uh, looks at your computer history i don't know about you but <laughs> i am not comfortable i would not want to show anyone what my computer history is because i tend to uh, run google searches on all different type of random things uh, just to know and curiosity and and so on but that is how it is yes next one please i think nobody still have mentioned the very important part of this ethics ethical problems and i concerning the political influence i can ha- i systems can have on people for example if you think of the new speed we have in facebook uh, there you also get not only your friends posts but also some uh, views uh, from the pages that pay for that or things like that and i think there was a big discussion on it uh, uh, when there were elections in the us because uh, people were, were influenced by different algorithms algorithms <laughs> showing them news and uh, statistics and things like that i think this is a very important part because it influences people so much yes please reflect on the on these points the voice quality was a little bit it was difficult to hear for me yes next one please okay uh, do you hear me yes rosie please go ahead um so i wanted to talk about a point that you made about um hackers that are like able to listen what you are saying in your phone for example mm-hmm. and um and uh, the thing is that um i know a story about um apple that uh, was um listening to people conversations without them knowing yeah and yeah. it was to improve um the voice recognition Yes. So yes. they were hiring for example uh French people in order yeah. to yeah. listen 
to uh, French people speaking uh, in front of their phones, and the people were not knowing, of course, but it is all in order to uh, improve the, um, the voice recognition uh, thing. So yeah. I think that, yes, they are already doing illegal things and stuff like that in order to, you know, improve AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there was this, and I also wanted to talk about um, other stuff, like, um, for example, the social, um, the social impact of AI, for yeah. example, yeah. Um, when it comes to jobs, uh, you you mentioned yesterday that maybe uh, AI will make us, you know, have more jobs. You know, there would be more qualified jobs for people to to have. Yeah. But I yeah. but I was thinking that maybe there will be more uh, jobs that require high education, but mm. all the jobs mm. that are going to be um, erased, like you know farmer jobs for example yeah. you know they will be erased yeah. and uh, people will not all the people will not be able to to just go in high education maybe you know yeah. they will yeah. have a problem of uh, you know some rich people can access high education some po poor people cannot access high education so how are these people going to you know, be data scientist, for example. And some people don't even want to pursue high education or don't have the capacity for that. And I think that these people will not be able to keep up with that. Yeah. And um, maybe if, and some people already thought about um, the fact that some people in the society will not be able to keep up with that. And that's why they thought about a universal income, so yeah, that, yeah. yes, all these people that will be jobless can have a universal, uh, like, can benefit from the universal income. Yes, yes. But the problem with the universal income is how much will you have for yourself, like maybe $800 to live, which is not enough, of course. Um, so yes, I wanted also to to raise this question. Yes. Um, yes. Good. 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 And there is also another thing uh, that you mentioned uh, earlier about um, children oh. and children and technology. And I know that it is not specific specific to AI, but for example, in France, um, people know that. Um, as a lot of children are familiar with technology earlier and earlier, for example, with the keyboard, they don't um, write properly, they don't um, like, like before, you know. And for example, as you calculate everything with a calculator, you cannot do mental calculation like before. So I don't think that maybe I, I think that maybe AI make people lazier, you know, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, going to, going to. Yeah. Very good comments. Uh, thanks for that, Rosie. And you know, these uh, these things which, although I showed that you know new jobs will be created, but I understand that you know people have different way of looking at it and Rosie mentioned you know some things which which all of us should reflect on and I can just I would like to just share a personal story here like a uh, couple of years ago when I um, was interested in you know uh, lecturing and this type of job which I which I do and which I'm doing with, with you now I just spent before when I was just starting out I just reflected on it like how should I do it uh, is a traditional way of lecturing which i'm sure you you guys are familiar you run some powerpoints or you just speak you a lecturer comes they just speak what they have to say and that is that is all about it or they are running some powerpoint slides and they have they know what they are going to 
going to uh, say and not so many questions and answers and different type of opinion for various reasons because it opens up a lot of difficulty also for different type of personality like what is going to happen if you are going to ask some question and the lecturer is unable to answer that question what is going to happen to the credibility of the lecturer and so on there are so many things and people want to know what is going to happen so that's a safe way of lecturing so i thought that if i do it like that then my job is very easily replaced like what what added value i am going to give to the people there what is how i can add value so over a period of time i i tried different methodologies i tried case studies videos different type of things i i i tried and then over a period of time i i said that maybe this is one way which is going to make me stand apart from the from the crowd like you know this type of dialogue discussion and is if you run a lecture like this then uh, of course there are many negatives also how to you know uh, control the people and but you have to see what is what is happening sometimes people are going to say things which which you don't like or you don't support or whatever it is so but uh, this now this type of way now technology can if technology can technology or ai uh, replace lecturers yes it can very easily it can write it can read it can do all those things which we discussed yesterday yeah it can prepare documents find information online and give it to you guys all of that it can done uh, but can it can it generate this type of dialogue or not which is kind of a debate type of thing uh, and uh, it 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 is it is in one moment it is asking for too many different things to be dealt with yeah so maybe ai can so so i said okay if i do it like this maybe then i am not very easily replaceable so this is what i did in my in my job the so same thing you need to maybe do in your own jobs also like you need to see and reflect okay this is my job this is how i am doing it these are the skills which ai has how can i change it or craft it in a way that i i stand apart at least for a couple of years at least for next decade or something because ai is is growing and and so on like this so we'd have to think about think about that yes uh, next one uh, prudence has raised her hand rosie has raised her hand anyone else if they want to make some concluding remarks or something um th this is good time to uh, maybe maybe do that okay maybe okay very good so i um, going to show you a couple of things from the same uh, same page so this is where we were you are seeing it on your screen uh, now okay so this is we looked at this yes. but there are so many other so there's so many other clips which i passed and i passed them because i want you to watch them uh, you can watch couple of them even they are short clips the shorter ones you can even as you are writing your reflection for today you maybe scan through them but you have some idea what is what we are trying to say uh how artificial intelligence reflects human biases yeah, you were talking about biases yesterday also and i gave you how i think about that uh, how it can be improved this is the talk which uh, which is you know it's going to give you some new ideas which uh, maybe we did not say it in the session so it would be nice if you have time you can uh, listen to this type of uh, conversation ai jobs a couple of clips i have posted jobs and ai 4 minute long uh, four and a half minute long employment and ai listen to this type of and uh, try to inform your uh, your knowledge or whatever it is ai for children we spoke about that briefly also here is a link which here is the link the last one second last one uh, unicef again united nation uh, organization uh, children yeah? yeah look at this child is uh, looking at this screen and ai for children uh, you can you can make a career in this like you know for children what is if you are interested in in children and so on 
is a is that some nice uh, postings are there policy guidance on ai for children it's a report uh, download it scan to it you don't have to read all of these things in one go but at least you should it takes 5 10 minutes to scan whole all of this this whole of this section spend like 20 minutes in whole of it as you know scan through different things and then listen to more the things which you like or you want to learn about that's what you are so don't get overwhelmed that there are so many things or or whatever uh, guidance policy policy just scan through the document look at the headings what are the things they are talking about and try to link it with the chat uh, which you had with, with different people today and uh, conversation was also happening developing girls uh, digital and ai skills uh, adolescent perspective on ai nice articles here we must be guided by children's rights so a couple of rights you are talking about today like children rights rights of ai you guys have posted some comments uh, there's so a very interesting point there uh, so um, again one more time i want to show you the 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 slides uh, the the uh, website so this is on your oma when you will click this is what is going to open you are going to click on lectures when you click here this is going to open you are going to click on ai for everyone master the basics you are going to click this first one and from there you are going to click module three issues concerns ethical this is what we did today yeah module three so when you will click this this is going to open up so i'm saying spend maybe 20 minutes 30 minutes scanning through various things uh, giving some perspective as you are writing your today's assignment the reflection uh, those of you who are just joining today just read the instructions on me and follow them yeah it's pretty straightforward and so on so i mean, before i conclude we just have like five minutes so going to conclude this this documentary is a the must uh, someone mentioned x x machina x machina in the comments it's a must watch uh, please do watch uh, this this movie uh, if you are into these type of these type of things don't uh, i don't know who mentioned it i think jesse mentioned it or someone else maybe a couple of people have watched it valenti uh, has also mentioned it yeah so uh, don't watch the trailer or anything because the trailer is not good at all and you might not like it but uh, watch it and see what if uh, give it like 40 40 45 minutes if you like it for 40 45 minutes then you continue it if you don't like it no problem you can you can stop it it's a it's as as jesse saying it's a great movie on on these type of things which we are trying to discuss in the in our conversation and this documentary you definitely need to watch all of it uh, as a matter of fact all the things which are posted on the website i have developed them over the years last three four years it's not that it is developed overnight uh, so you also cannot watch everything overnight take time see what is what is what and then over a period of time but i would just think that you will not just limit your learning in these five days you will continue on on this on this path and as you are spending time you will uh, you will spend some time on this website also yeah this uh, last documentary, of course, it, it is a documentary, so it is long. It is like 42 minutes. Uh, we're not going to watch it, all of it here. Uh, but I'm going to show you, as I'm concluding last five minutes, I'm going to show uh, you that as like first five minutes or something like that. It, it is not the voice quality is not clear. I have also posted it in the chat. So you can play it in your own browser. And after that, I need to make some comments and then we will uh, say bye bye for the night but please enjoy the first five minutes or so of this uh, this is hatsune miku she is a hologram and this is akihiko kondo her husband Onijua. hello hello you look Kawaii. cute today 
I love compliments. Miku is a simple form of artificial intelligence. And for Kondo, it was a case of love at first sight. Miku has become a legitimate pop star and even appears at concerts as a 3D projection. In November 2018, Kondo married Miku at a ceremony in Tokyo. He placed the ring around the wrist of a Miku doll. He now keeps the doll in his bedroom. Kondo's relationships with real women have been painful, so he chose a virtual partner. I love her, but it's hard to say if she loves me. Still, if you asked her, I think she'd say yes. Hatsune Miku and Akihiko Kondo are an extreme example of the relationship between people and machines. In the future, we'll no doubt spend more time interacting with technology that uses artificial intelligence, or AI. We may even develop robots that are smarter than we are. Now, in the 21st century, we will have to decide how to deal with this complicated new situation. Yeah, so I just played the first two minutes of this documentary, uh, documentary very exciting documentary. Uh, it is this last one on this page of ethics. You should watch it, all of it. What you, should, what you just saw is, uh, is not something which is going to happen in the future. The guy have a virtual partner and the guy has married, uh, married, married her. Yeah. And now you can see that uh, you can say that don't don't judge anyone. You can say that, oh, what is this? The mind is gone wrong or it's not it's not right. It's very wrong thing to do. But uh, he had some painful, you know, moments, real life things did not work for him. And he decided to have this virtual partner. And it's not he's not alone in this world. There are many people, uh, especially in these type of countries. Uh, where technology is advanced, artificial intelligence is advanced, people are taking these type of services of different nature. So from outside, uh, well, I have not, uh, I have not, uh, I have not, uh, I have not uh, consumed any of those products <laughs> myself. And maybe you have also not, but uh, these things are happening. And maybe we ethically, we might think that this is wrong, but these type of things are these type of things are happening. So uh, that opens up a new debate of ethics and what is right and what is wrong. Uh, so please watch that that type of documentary and think about those things. With that, uh, I'm going to uh, close for uh, today's session. But if anyone wants to say something, add to the discussion, make some pointers, I'm around here.